the climate is changing. Recently, that fact hit home to farmers across this country from a tough drought, the likes of which hasn't been seen in years. When you get right down to it, water's the problem and the solution. Without rain, crops don't get what they really need to grow. That makes efficient water use a priority for those who depend on groundwater for their crops. In this country, there are over 260,000 center pivots, circular fields with water sprinklers that rotate over the crops, bringing water directly where it's needed. But the question is, how much is enough and how much is too little? A new technology from a new company called HydroBio, backed by Los Alamos National Laboratory, is using satellite remote sensing, coupled with a new computer application to help answer that question. The reaction to targeted irrigation management has really been tremendous. At first, it, we were greeted with skepticism because it's such a, a whole new, very high-tech uh, approach to irrigation scheduling, and it's done with satellite data as well. Uh, that we were greeted with skepticism, and now we have growers that are, that are asking us to start working on their fields and providing them with prescriptions as soon as we can. Most center pivots cover about 120 acres and take between three and seven days to irrigate a field. Center pivots are increasing in the United States and are becoming prominent in many foreign countries. So the applet is about a user interactive web-based platform that allows growers to look at the watering needs of their crops that we're receiving from satellite data. And we clip it down to the field so that we can see on a 22 by 22 meter basis the watering needs of the plants within those pixels. And what we also get to do is we also get to show them each individual field. We get to show them the charting of trends over time. So we get to look at uh, what's happening over the last seven days and what's happening over the next seven days. And as you can see here, the really, really bright part, that is very lush, which means the farmers are actually irrigating very heavily right there and you can see this half of the field where they're just leaving it alone or it could be a different crop or they could have already har harvested that crop. And we also get to kind of do some statistics on that so we can bake, break out different portions of the field and show how different portions of the field are performing differently. Um, where some parts of the field may have had damage like hail damage or pest damage, they'll be performing at a different water use rate maybe than other parts of the field and we can allow them, we can give them the opportunity to look at how their field is doing and adjust their irrigation prescriptions accordingly. What we'll load is several pieces of information. The first of which is a satellite image to show him where relative to other things his field is. It's like a Google Maps image, it's just a static image of what's going on. The next tab over is the crop water use image. Okay. So if you click on the crop water use image, what you see is you see an actual pixelated image of what the water use looks like. The scale is off, to the, is off to the right, the little legend there from 0 to 0.3 plus. And what's going on here is each pixel, based on its brightness, is telling you whether it's using more or less water. And if you actually drag your mouse across the screen, what you'll see is a tooltip will pop up. Okay. And that tooltip underneath the mouse is actually the crop water use of that pixel. And as you move the mouse around all, the whole image, you can see it change over time. So each of these 22 by 22 meter sections are using different water. And those are the pixels of the satellite image. Correct, okay. correct, pixels of the satellite image. Other pieces of information that are here is below, there's a chart that shows the last seven days as a solid line, and then the next seven days as a forecast line for what the water use is expected to be on the average of the field. It also shows on a blue line, it shows the rainfall that has occurred. Okay. So, they're getting a bunch of information here all at once. We've also made this a little easier in showing the irrigation demand values in a text box off to the left that tells them what the irrigation demand has been for, a yes for yesterday, a three-day period, and a seven-day period minus the rainfall that has occurred. So this would be the water that's needed to be made up in the field over the last seven days, three days, or as of yesterday. This is really just one stage in development of a whole suite of things that can be developed and deployed via the web that give the growers more and more information, um, agronomy information, weather information, field information that they don't have now, and all they have is one login site and all the applets can be linked. We've seen this year, in 2012, that, that the, uh, the degree of drought across the Midwest has been absolutely devastating. Many farmers have not gotten crops even from irrigated in their irrigated systems. 
And the nice thing about Tim is that we offer a solution for that because now we do the calculations so the farmer can't get behind in his irrigation scheduling. We will, this is something that we track for them every day. We're scraping data from the web on weather and following through what their crop is with growth curves from, uh, that are calculated forward from each one of the uh, satellite overpasses. So in the future, I don't really see that any pivots that we're managing uh, barring an act of God are going to not get a good crop. So this is something I think that's going to revolutionize irrigated agriculture and solve the kinds of problems that we're seeing across the board on a year like 2012. Lanel was stepped in at a very critical time in our development and their Venture Acceleration Fund grant helped us to really kick off. Think of it as a tipping point where we were just about ready to get uh, a whole bunch of work done, but we didn't have the staff on and allowed us to hire critical staff and to do lots of programming and essentially move in a summer, um, essentially a year ahead.